So we got everyone's attention, and we can mute the side conversations until another break or into our sessions. Great. Okay, as I mentioned before the break, uh, we're going to start off like we have in the last few years uh, with some presentations from each of our kind of core groups, the field crops, horticulture, and livestock groups. And we've asked Sam Bennett, Emily Fagan, and Dave Schmidt to do the honors of that this year. And I'm going to let Sam Bennett kick things off. So Sam, it's all yours. All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, I'm excited to kick off cooperators meeting this year. Uh, from every farmer friend I've talked to this year, it's been an awfully challenging year in just about everything. But the one high point of my farming year, I guess, has been PFI trials. I really enjoy those. <laughs> it seems like when I had a rough day, I could go play with those trials and I had a good day then. Um, <laughs> I need more like you. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, so I'm Sam Bennett. Uh, I live in Northwest Iowa. I farm with my family up there. Um, mostly conventional corn and soybeans. We do have some transitional to organic acres. Um, we've been playing with cover crops off and on for about 10 years, mostly rye before soybeans, and that's most of what my trials this year were about. Um, the red star up there is where I live. Um, pretty good rolling hills and, and good high rent farm ground there. Um, so we did some trials on um, terminating cover crops after seeding soybeans. Um, in the past we've always seen that the fields that we had a cereal rye cover crop on were our cleanest fields, not very many weeds. Most people can echo those same ideas. We've seen that on a lot of different farms, different systems, different management systems. Um, so it was pretty obvious transition to if I'm getting weed control out of soybeans, how can I reduce my herbicide bill and, and use some of that benefit? Um, and then further, can I offset the cost of my establishing those cover crops by reducing my herbicide bill? And I know in organic systems, a, a lot of people's goal is no-till organic, cover crop based. I think we're going to try to find something in the middle. Um, and organic <laughs> management gives up a lot of times some yield and some planting date. Just part of that system and in my system for the best yields I really can't give up planting date and to make a profit I really can't give up yield just that's the way the soybean market is right now so somewhere in the middle is what we're shooting for. So on this first trial it was pretty much a delayed termination trial to see how much weed control soybean or the rye could provide in the soybeans. Um, that's what it looked about about well that, that was the planting date May 11th so we drilled that rye the fall before planted beans in 15 inch rows, no-till, everything in the green standing rye like that. Um, May 11th this year seemed like April 11th a lot of years. It was just really tough conditions. So um, I just used a pretty simple pre-herbicide, um, nothing too special there. And just to see what this trial could do, I didn't put a post-applied herbicide on it at all. So the costs are pretty low that way. Um, there's trial design. Uh, I did four reps um, of terminating the, terminating the rye at planting versus sometime later and we terminated just pretty much based on the weather. Picked a nice warm day to do it and that's what it looked like during the second termination. So the first first strip on the right there we sprayed and killed the rye about the day of planting and on the left we left it go for a month. So in that tall rye there's beans in there somewhere. Um, there's cover crop biomass, obviously the stuff I sprayed early was those short bars and we had close to 5,000 pounds of dry biomass um, in those strips where I let it go for a month. Um, there's the beans poking out of standing rye and, and the dead rye there. Um, there's beans there, the neighbors didn't think there was, but there's beans there. <laughs> um, so the later termination strips there are green. And then shortly after I sprayed them, then those later termination strips were that bright white that you get from dead rye, and the green strips were soybeans. So again, that got the neighbors talking. <laughs> so go clear through everything, and this is what it looked like at harvest. So the strip on the left was the earlier termination, and there was some weeds, but I mean, there was some fields around that were worse than that under traditional management. And the strip on the right, the beans were actually delayed a little bit in maturity, which was 
odd, I thought, but those were the strips where the rye was really tall and I had really good weed control there. Um, bean height was about the same. Uh, I've seen some trials where the beans are lanky and leggy and I didn't see that too much in this trial. And the ultimate goal, yields were similar between the two and where I left that rye get really big, the yield was anecdotally a little bit better, not statistically, but it was right in there. So I didn't give up yield. So that was one of my goals too. Um, so ultimately, yep, letting that rye grow for a month didn't hurt the yield. Um, I did reduce the herbicide use by somewhat, and the economics show that. Um, I didn't sacrifice the yield. I planted when I wanted to and pretty much got the rest of those benefits from a big cover crop for free if I paid for it in weed control. But my big question at the end of the, of the day was, did the rye provide that much weed control or did spraying a month later provide some of that weed control? So somehow we'll design a trial this, this weekend to figure out how to do a, a multi-dimensional trial that way. But at the end of the day, doing some of these replications of these trials, we'd like to show to RMA that there's not that much risk in ensuring these practices and let us use cover crops how we'd like to and still ensure it under the federal crop insurance program. Um, another trial we did beyond this was how much can I reduce herbicide using different herbicide programs. Um, this one we, um, we broadcast rye in the fall instead of drilling it. So most guys like to broadcast because it's easy. Um, I put it on with a, a haggy high boy, just had somebody come in and do it. And uh, we also terminated the rye all on the same date um, in this trial. So it wasn't a delayed termination, it was within RMA guidelines, so it was insurable. Um, there's my herbicide costs. Um, you can see the lowest cost one was a shot of glyphosate early at cover crop termination, and I did have a weed escape on two of those trials where I thought I needed to do it again, so I sprayed later in the year, and then that full program was the more expensive program, pretty much what I would do every year without a cover crop. So uh, there's broadcasting in the fall. Um, I just did 45 pounds an acre, and some people would say that's not enough. It's worked for me before. This year, it was not enough. Uh, that's what it looked like at soybean planting. It looked really good, but the rye didn't grow a lot beyond that, and I killed it shortly after that. So we found out pretty quick that eight inch tall rye this year didn't provide enough weed control when some other years it has. Um, so <laughs> there's my weed escape. Um, looked a little, it's tough to see up there, but it, it was pretty hairy. Uh, water hemp and mare's tail, lamb's quarter, came on pretty strong there where I just used the, the termination pass and I didn't do anything else for, for weed control chemically. Um, so I did spray that first, or the one pass system and the two pass system another time and at harvest it looked pretty good. Um, and again, soybean yields really weren't that much different between all the different um, replications there. So. That was meeting with my goal not to reduce yield by doing any of these things. Um, so again, we reduced herbicide costs because that low, low use herbicide or low cost herbicide, it did provide adequate weed control. Um, it was a little bit weedy, but again, there was neighboring fields that were worse. So I'm just doing something right. And we kind of wondered if spraying later or doing different herbicide programs might affect yield because we did spray kind of late when I had that weed escape. Um, so it was another trial to see how consistent a cover crop weed control or weed suppression plan can be. And going back a little bit, I did a trial last year where I had virtually perfect weed control across all my passes with any management system I wanted to use. So. Every year is different. I guess that's moral of the story, but you really don't know unless you plant that cover and go scout, put on your basic herbicide program, scout some more, treat things as needed. If you don't need a second pass, don't do it. And at the end of the day, you get most of those other benefits from the cover crop for free if you can pay for it in weed control. So, 
that's about my trials for the year. But I had fun with them. I liked watching them, liked taking pictures of them, liked defending myself at the coffee shop when people are like, what the heck are you doing? And other than that, any questions about all those things? Yeah, Mark. He asked, was it difficult to harvest the soybeans where there was tall rye? By fall, most of that rye had fallen down. I didn't roll it or anything, but it had pretty much fallen down and didn't have any problems. Um, you could still tell in the fall that those strips had a lot more biomass there. I mean, it was 5,000 pounds versus 500 pounds of, of dry biomass laying there. So I'd like to see what that adds in carbon and think about how many roots are in that soil. So. I wouldn't be surprised on this trial if I see some visual differences in my corn next year on the same field because of that with a big cover crop versus a really small cover crop when I killed it. So Wade's got a question. This should be good. Did you take a shovel out and see what the ground looked like in the two plots? Not after harvest. I did when the rye was pretty big. Oh, Wade asked, did I go dig a shovel full of dirt, see what things looked like? After harvest, before harvest, oops, drop my clicker. Um, <laughs> I did. Um, people say that there's as much above ground biomass as there is below ground biomass in a rye cover crop a lot of times. I think that's true. It's different soil. Um, so that's kind of what I'm curious to see what it looks like, especially when I'm planting corn next year, just what that soil structure is like. Um, I would like to do an infiltration test or something like that this coming spring just because I've no-tilled it and haven't done anything to it. So, yeah. Margaret. By your late, by your late spray, I can't remember if all those were really, did you end up with any viable rye seed? Um, did, I have, did I have viable rye seed left in some of those places where I had weed escapes? Um, I killed most of the rye with herbicide. Um, like always, maybe 1% probably makes it through and it probably did have viable rye seed. In my system, not that big of a deal. In an organic system, it would be. So, um, wasn't a big deal, I guess. I was much more worried about water hemp seed. <laughs> Kate. Um, I do take really, oh, repeat the question, uh, will I take yield analysis next year on my corn crop that will be there? Anecdotally, yes, I do keep pretty good records and have a good yield monitor that would record that. Um, I mean, I laid out the, the trials and I always do on the GPS, so I've got that where everything was labeled by year, so I could go back and see if that was a, an issue or a benefit from the year before. All right, well, we'll pass it on to the livestock. Uh, it's on to Emily, actually. Emily, all right. right.